Hello and welcome to another video on Inkscape. In today's video we're going to be taking a look at guidelines and how we can use them to help line up the elements of our images. Stay tuned and we we'll get straight into it. So guides are there purely to help us lay out the elements of our projects. They're visible why we want them visible when we're creating our projects but when we actually render the final image they don't appear in the rendered image. So to be able to create guides, we need these rulers visible on the sides, the top and the side. If they're not visible on yours, if you go up to view, come down to show hide, in here you've got a ticks box for rulers. So just make sure that's ticked. So to create guides, we can literally just drag guides in from the top. We can drag guides in from the side. And we can also drag guides in from the top two corners to create 45 degree angled uh, guides. With our guides created, if we've got them in use and we want to hide them temporarily, we can go up to one of the rulers and just click on it and that will hide all of your guides and you can click it to toggle it back to visible. We also have a button up the top here for locking our guides. So at the moment, if we go in, we can grab hold of our guides and we can move them. If we come up to the lock button, you'll notice that these little red dots, which are the origins of the guide, turn to little crosses. Once they've turned to crosses, they're actually locked, so you can't actually select them or move them. We can still snap objects to them, so they're still useful, but we can't interfere with them or accidentally move them now. So in addition to dragging in guides, we can also create guides from objects. So we can come over, get our rectangle tool, we can drag out a rectangle, we can go up to object, and we can come down to uh, object to guides and create guides from it. We can do the same with our polygons and stars tool. We can drag out a star. If we just now come up to objects, down to object to guides, it'll create it from the bounding box or boundary box of our star. But if we back step, select our star, come up to path and go to object to path to convert it to a path. Now, when we go to object and put object guides, it converts it into a set of guidelines that run along the sides of the star. Obviously, this is a little bit busy, so I think we're back step and get rid of that. We can also create guides from our page. So if we come up to edit, come down to create guides around the page. This uh, give us four guidelines surrounding our page. And this can be quite handy if we wanted to create a border, for example. So if we come up to the top guideline and just hover our cursor over it, the line turns red and we get a little hand icon. If we double click, we can bring up our guideline dialog box. This gives us a lot greater control over our guidelines. We can give them labels. So if we put in here top, for example, we can change the color. We could change that to a red. And if I just move this over to one side, we've got an X and Y uh, coordinate. This is for the origin of our guideline, which is the red dot. So we can position this wherever we want. At the moment, we're working in absolute values. So we're telling it exactly where we want it to go. Because the origin for this guideline is at the top left hand corner of our page. It's at point zero zero. So we could move it. We could move it down 50 if we wanted to. So we've got the 50 here. So if we moved it down 50, so we change that to 50 on the Y axis and press OK. We've changed the color. If you notice, we've got the little top uh, label in there and we're now at uh, 50 down on the Y axis. If we just double click again, bring it back up. So that's working with absolute values. If we come down here, we've got relative change. So if we click on this, now the changes are relative to where it is at the moment. So we could say we want to move down another 10. So when we put 10 into our Y this time, Instead of taking it to position 10, which would be up here somewhere, what it's going to do is move it 10 down from its current location. So now we're up to 60, or down to 60. We can also change the angle of our line. So if we come up 
double click on our line, bring up our dialog box. We can either change the angle, absolute, so we could put in here 30 degrees. It'll rotate clockwise 30 degrees around the origin. There we go. So now that's rotated clockwise 30 degrees from horizontal, or we could rotate it uh, relative to where it is at the moment. So if we put relative change, then we can add, say, another 10 degrees. So it changed that to 40 degrees. Mark. If we open up the dialog box again, so the other options we got are we can lock the guideline that we're on. We can afterwards press the lock up in the top uh, left hand corner here, which would lock all of the guides. And then when we clicked it again, it would unlock all the guides, including the one that we've locked independently. We've also got duplicate. So if we press duplicate, we can duplicate that guideline. And then we've got two set at the same angle. Another thing we can do is we can snap our guides to objects. So if we had an object drawn out, so we had a rectangle or an ellipse drawn out, we can snap to these um, paths. Obviously, over on snapping, we have to make sure that snapping is enabled. Snapping to guides is enabled, the very bottom button, and whatever we want to snap to. So in this case, I've got um, snapping to nodes enabled. I've got snapping to paths, snapping to uh, intersections and snapping to cusp nodes all enabled. So if we drag a guide down from the top, it will snap to our path. It will snap to cusp nodes. It will snap to guides. But it stays um, at the set angle that it's set at. So we can also drag in, say, a 45 degree angle one. We can snap it to the corner or anywhere along the paths and snap it to this one. So this is quite handy if we just wanted to bring one in to line up with the side of a box, for example. So guides can be snapped using all the, the usual snapping options that we've got down the uh, right hand side here. In addition to these, if we come up to the top, this icon. A little page with a spanner on it gives us our document properties, which are purely for the document we're working on. So if we click on this, it brings up document properties. And in here, we've got a selection of tabs. Uh, you might notice we've got guides. So if we click on guides, so in here, we can toggle the visibility of our guides. We can lock all the guides. We can change the default color of guidelines. So if we just click on this, we can change the color. We can change it to green, for example. We have highlight color. Highlight color is when we hover over a line. Oh, let's change the selection tool. When we hover over a line to get our little hand, it turns red. That's the highlight color. So we could change that to, I don't know, light blue, turquoise, whatever you want to call it. When we hover over it, it turns light blue. Not really clear, so I might change that back to red. Um, we can create guides around the page again. We can delete all the guides. Um, so there's a few options in here that are handy. So in addition to the guides uh, tab, we've also got snap. If we go on here, down the bottom, we've got snapping perpendicularly and snapping tangentially. So if we first do snapping perpendicular, we can drag in guides and we can snap them perpendicular to our path. So we can also drag in a guide and do the same to our rectangle. So when we're working with guides, they can be a little bit temperamental when we've got a straight edge like this. But yeah, we can always drag one in from the top. So sometimes they're flip round. Oh, there we go. You can't get it to go back now. But yeah, so we, we can do that anyway. Um, we've got snapping tangentially. So again, this this is more relevant for a circle. So if you bring one down, we can snap a line tangentially to ovals and paths. We can do the same for the rectangle as well if we drag in a guide. 
you can snap it tangentially. So they're just two nice little options that you should be aware of. So just quickly before I go, I just want to show you how you can use guides. So I've got some guides here that I've just set up. Um, they're locked, so we can't select them. If we, for example, wanted to draw um, an element to our design in this square area, we can grab our rectangles tool and with snapping on, so I'm snapping, I've got snapping to the guides and I've got snapping to custom nodes, paths and intersections uh, all enabled. We can come over and we can snap to the corner of our guides. So this allows us to quickly build up our images. Another thing we can do is if we have a rectangle, for example, and we want to set it on this, this guideline, which is a, an obscure angle. I think I set this one at 35 degrees. We can grab our rectangle. We can bring it up so it snaps to the path in the bottom corner here. And now we're snapped on this corner. We need to rotate our rectangle. So we want to be rotating it around this corner so it stays in contact with our guideline. So to do that, I'm going to double click or click again on our rectangle. I'm then going to select the rotational center, making sure that I've got rotational centers enabled in our snapping menu. I'm then going to drag it over and I'm going to snap it to the cusp node in the corner. So now our rotational center is on the corner, which is on the guide. We should be able to rotate it round and ensuring that we've got cusp nodes enabled in our snapping, we should be just get hold of this. Oh, oh, and rotate it round so it snaps to the path. So now we have our rectangle at the same angle and sitting neatly on our guideline. So I think that, that covers everything I want to look at in this uh, tutorial. What I might do, I think in the next video, I might show you an example of how we can use these guides. So I might use KDP, um, Kindle Direct Publishing. Uh, we just lay out a page so you can see how you can use these guidelines to format your pages when you're size, sizing your pages and creating margins, like a gutter margin, or you might need a bleed around the edge. So we'll take a look at that in the next video. Thanks for watching and I shall see you next time.